All right, so before we get into the meat and potatoes of the video today, I want to ask you guys, what do you think about having this microphone in the shot now? I'm not entirely sure how I feel about it. I do feel like it's less professional, but I've been having a little bit audio issues I've noticed with my videos. Sometimes they seem like they're a little bit too low or something. I don't know. I'm still fiddling around and trying to find uh, what works out best. So just let me know in the comments below. But with that being said, audio mixers going into 2024 i've been getting a lot of people asking me because one of my friends had his go xlr mini die on him pretty much it's just not working correctly anymore um, no matter what he does so he's looking for a possible replacement um, i've had multiple people tell me in um, the comment section of some of the audio mixers i have done whether it be from comica the one i did on that uh, the fine fine one the mayana one and stuff like that software for microphones and all this stuff people keep asking me what is the best setup that minimizes maybe not having to rely on software too much because software could always be janky no matter how smooth or good it is um and then you have the issues of people wanting you know a lot of physical control over that software or just a device that allows them to physically do stuff and maybe not so much software stuff um, so what I have noticed is that yes, there is the Rode Streamer X out there is all in one solution, um, but it doesn't have really any knobs other than the microphone and the headphone. And then the sound pads are not labeled or any way for you to remember unless you re have a really good memory what those sound pads do. And you still have to pretty much have the software running or looking at the software or whatever for most of these devices anyways, to be able to control them, you have to have them open. Um, so I don't know if there is a device out there that you don't have to have the software running, but you can still can control the audio. I, I don't know if that exists. Um, and that's just an unfortunate thing right now what i use is the wave xlr and the pc panel pro the pc panel pro allows me to control the audio uh, overall master volume of the wavelink software from the wave uh, xlr it allows me to control the overall volume of those sub mixes not the individual sub mixes and that's the problem that i have when i when people ask me stuff and i'm trying to convey to them which one they should get because to my knowledge, at least on the market right now, I don't think there's a device out there that has physical hardware controls that allows you to control individual submixes with ease. And I know people are gonna say, well, you have the Wavelink software, just suggest them the, uh, the Stream Deck Plus. For one, that thing's $200, it's way overpriced for what it does. Uh, for two, there's only four knobs. There's not any faders or anything like that. And for people who like, to adjust music that means you have to turn a dial instead of just sliding down a fader a little bit that's easier and that's why i like the pc panel pro because it has five knobs and four uh, faders you should look at it it's, it's it's actually very really really good the software looks very basic but i've never had problems with the software at all and i've had that thing for almost three years now it's it's a beast i love it um the only thing is is like i said it can't control what i hear versus what my stream hears so if i want the music lowered in my ear i have to either individually go into the sub mix in wavelength meaning i'm have to alt tab or find the software to lower it or i have to use a button on a stream deck now if you had stream deck or wherever at any point in time some people maybe never had an issue with stream deck i've had it to where now i can only have stream deck open on this monitor i have two other monitors i used to have it open up on my top monitor on my ultra i can't do that anymore um i'm having that issue and that is an actual bug or whatever that's been around for almost probably at this point three to four years um some people have it some people don't i'm one of those people that have it um, if i have it on any other monitor it crashes sometimes even blue screens my pc and I've had it happen on my old PC. That's why I found out the fix when I went to this PC. My PC is a beast. It's nothing that I'm doing personally wrong. It's just the software for whatever reason. I don't, I don't know. So with that out the way and having Stream Deck or wherever, sometimes if you ever had a Stream Deck, you know, going into multiple folders and having, you know, because I use pretty much eight different inputs on my Wavelink software. You can have up to nine. So I have a lot of mixes to control. I have this microphone. I have wireless lavalier system that's charging down there, hooked up to the Wavelink software. I have an audio mixer right here that's above the stream deck for testing microphones and stuff. I have that going into the Wavelink software. I also have browser 
audio, I have Spotify audio, I have Discord audio, I have the microphone audio as well. Like those are a lot of submixes to control. So obviously I would have to use the 32 bit version of a uh, 32 button version of the stream deck that's down there trying to do that and go into infinite folders sometimes when you click a button on the stream deck it, nothing happens sometimes when you click on a stream deck button nothing happens and then you click it again and then the stream deck acts like you press that button twice you know there, there's there's jankiness with the software elgato software is not the best software it's regardless of what whatever elgato partners are telling you regardless of the def elgato defenders in the in the comment section saying they never had a problem with elgato products it's something that's user-based no it's not again if you go to the if you go to the forums you go to reddit posts there's people who have issues with elgato software anything that's man-made it's not perfect that's fine if somebody has an issue that's fine if somebody doesn't have an issue it doesn't matter to me i can only talk about my own personal experience so going back to that again clicking the buttons or wherever that means i have to go into obviously because of all the stuff that's uh, i would say contained in the wavelength software that i use i have to go into an infinite folder obviously and i would have to sit there and have buttons for everything it, it the, the, the button reliability is just not there and then on top of that i have to click a button and wait and make sure and then maybe click it up you know what i'm saying versus sliding a slider to the perfect amount or turning a knob to the perfect amount is obviously better and more uh can do it uh i say conducive to what i want as a streamer not hitting a button so the stream that plus right there with those eight buttons it's it's not going to be anything that i would want other than like actually muting maybe an audio source if i wanted to do that i would just use my 32 button one there's no reason for me to pay $200 to get access to be able to do that. Not to mention, yes, it has four knobs and you can slide the touchscreen or wherever to get access to the other, you know, faders or wherever. So right now I have eight, there's four buttons or four knobs. That would be perfect, right? It's still paying $200 for it. And yes, I can click the knobs in or wherever to mute or toggle between the instances that I'm doing. But why would I want to do that every single time I want to, you know, control a submix? why when i could just do that with a fader on the pc pounder pro that costs a hundred dollars that has four faders and five knobs that gives me access and control to do everything it's just apparently a master volume that's the perfect device to allow me to do everything at a fly i don't have to look at the stream deck press the knob wherever make sure that it you know swapped over because we're dealing with stream deck software making sure that it flopped over to monitoring or stream out or whatever mix twisting the dial to make sure when i could just flick a flader down on my pc pounder pro and be and just keep moving you know what i'm saying kind of like just subconsciously do that you know what i mean sometimes even with the stream deck like i i know where my buttons are mentally the ones i use a lot so i click a button nothing happens then I have to look down and be like, I clicked the button, right? Yeah, nothing happens. I click it again. All of a sudden the action repeats two or three times. Or just for some reason, I have to restart the Stream Deck software. You, you see what I'm saying? And it's like, all I want to do is control the mix from my wavelength. So I would just, I better off just alt tabbing out of the video game down playing and going into the stream mix. Why, why is that? Why don't we have, a, why didn't they come out with a physical device that's like the 32 button one have two rows of that 32 button one be you know stream deck buttons have the next couple rows or wherever be some faders maybe three or four faders and then the next final row wherever be like four knobs like that would have made more sense because then i could map individually the the knobs or wherever or the faders to the individual submixes i cannot i can map one fader to be like Oh, this controls the monitoring volume of your music. The next fader controls the monitoring volume of Discord. The next fader, the third fader, wherever controls what your stream hears for Discord chat. And then the next fader controls what your stream hears for music. You know what I'm saying? And if that's the only ones I need or wherever, I can go into Stream Deck software, change you know what the faders do wherever but if i just have faders i don't have to worry about buttons i don't have to worry about clicking in a knob i can just have that fader and then charge 200 bucks for that that would make more sense not the stream deck plus or wherever swiping or wherever to more knobs or what it, it it just doesn't make any sense 
it, it really doesn't. And like I said, it's $200, but that's the only way I know of as far as a company having software accompanying some hardware that allows you to control the submixes. And I know there's something out there from the Beacon Mix Create, but apparently like trying to get it to work with the Wavelink software, it doesn't really work uh, that well. And it's not gonna let you control the individual submix. Again, it's just gonna be like the PC Panel Pro. And that thing is like, for the uh, Beacon Mix Create, it's like 150 to $200 or something like that for the, the Create version. So that's still not gonna solve the individual submix problem. You see what I'm saying? I would have to have obviously the beacon set up or whatever, and I'm not paying almost $300 for that microphone. I don't care how good the microphone is. I, there's not enough there in my personal opinion and in all the drama behind beacon and all that stuff. I just, I can't really condone it or suggest it or whatever to people and, or use it myself or wherever, even though it, you know, it's really good what they got there technology wise, but again, they're just, it's overpriced in my personal opinion. And that's coming from somebody who can buy it and be perfectly fine. It's not going to like bother me or whatever. It's not too much money for me to spend. It's the fact that that microphone is just overpriced. <laughs> so, and then on top of that, getting the Beacon Mix Create on top of that to get everything to work functionally i might as well just go out and get like a roadcaster pro or duo or something from mackie that's been released or maybe even the road streamer x or something like the razor uh gold xlr mini clone or whatever but even all those aside from the mackie i think dlz creator which is like the roadcaster pro and duos aside from those things those are just for solo streamers those are not for people who do what i do you know what I'm saying? As far as having that many different microphones all hooked up and stuff like that, and not only just streaming, but doing different types of content creation. Future Squid here. I wanted to go ahead and give a little bit of clarification on this part of what I was talking about uh, so people don't misinterpret what I'm saying. What I'm saying is the devices such as the Rode Streamer X, the Razer Go XLR Mini Clone, the Avermedia thing, and even that new one from Mackie where for streamers, those are either just going to give you faders or dials. They're not going to really give you both. And yes, they have a small footprint, but most of the time they don't give you too much control over individual submixes. They'll give you control over the master volume of submixes. So the problem is, is that I hook up, like I said, so many different microphones and I apply so many different VSTs to those different microphones. So I need to be able to not only have those in the software and be able to do all that recordings and stuff and streaming and all that live. So I don't have to do any of it in post. And on top of that, I need to be able to control what I hear as far as music goes or volume for discord or internet sources, stuff like that, and have the volume be different for my stream. So not having access to, you know, faders and knobs to be able to do that is a problem again those devices would be good if you're just sitting here recording or streaming or wherever and you're not trying to accomplish what i'm trying to accomplish then that's going to you know be the perfect i would say thing for you now people will say just get the rocaster pro or the rocaster duo or the things from mackie that i showed earlier like the dlz creator even the smaller one since i complain about the footprint the dlz creator from mackie or wherever the xs version or wherever it's called that one is smaller but i lose access to the faders and on top of that most of those stuff are touch screens so i still would have to you know somehow finagle with stuff just to get to be able to control what i'm hearing versus what my stream is hearing instead of just like i have a pc panel pro just outside of the camera angle here and i could slide down a fader and instantly lower the music or instantly lower discord you know what i'm saying that that's what i want i don't want to have to go through so many steps just to turn down an individual submix and only time i can do that is if i sacrifice turning down the individual submix and just turn down the master volume of a submix that's the problem that i'm having hopefully that's a little bit better clarification i know i'm like an outlier or something like that or i'm like a one in a thousand or a million type of creator who's doing what i'm doing but there's nothing out there on the market that accomplishes 
and me doing all this research to find one, I found, you know, what's comfortable for people. So for streamers who are just, you know, just streaming, maybe recording videos or wherever, but they're just sitting at the streaming desk or stuff like that. They don't need all of the extra inputs. I would say, you know, the Rode Streamer X, the thing from Avra Media that came out a couple few years ago, wherever I forget what it's called, the Nexus or something like that. Um, I, I'm not sure if the software is any good now, but somebody could probably let me know in the comments below. But then you got the Razer one as well, but the software is janky with the Razer Synapse, so you have to deal with that. But it pretty much is the Go XLR Mini clone. Um, but those are going to be really good for solo, you know, content creators who are streaming. Those are the ones I would recommend. Outside of that, there's no audio mixer, man, that does it. It's all just master volume control. I just, I don't know. I don't know, but that's what I'm thinking about going into 2024, being a content creator and wanting, having physical controls and for my audio mixing. I just don't know if there is a company out there that allows you to do all that stuff. And like I said, you have to deal with some jankiness from the software and that's why people want physical controls, but the physical controls are so limiting because you can't control individual submixes with these physical controls because I have to go with like a third party, you know, I would say device like the PC panel pro in order to control what Elgato gives me. I don't know what the solution is here. It's just kind of like a rant kind of thing or whatever, but that's my thoughts and opinions, I guess, on audio mixers going into 2024. Like I said, there's a lot of products out there to choose from that allow you to route your audio. You're, if you're, especially if you're not having multiple mics plugged in, but if you're having multiple mics plugged in and you don't want to take up a big square thing or wherever on your desk from like like i said row uh, caster pro and duo and the one from mackie and stuff the dlz creators these ones are really really good obviously they're the one-stop shop for equipment for podcasters uh, people doing radio stations and stuff but even then there's no physical fader or dial to control individual submixes even if they have a touch screen and they have the digital you know um screen and stuff like that to see the individual submixes as far as I know, there's no way to map a fader or a knob to listen to um, individual submixes and turn something down in my headphones, but leave it at normal volume for people who are going to listen to the recording or the live stream. There's no way to do that, even on those devices. As far as I know, I could be ignorant on something. Let me know. Correct me in the comments. But and even those are 500 to 700 dollar mixers anyways. And like I said, they're going to take up too much desk space. So I, I don't know what the solution here is. I, I don't know. What was the point of this video?